We're going to talk now about a second type of convergence of sequences of random variables. This is known as convergence in distribution as compared to convergence in probability, which we talked about before. This will be very important when we're engaging with future results like the central limit theorem. Before, we looked at sequences of random variables that concentrate at a single point. For example, the sampling distribution of the sample mean of a sequence of independent observations concentrates at the population mean. There, we use the notion of convergence in probability. However, we noticed that certain sequences of random variables don't concentrate at a point, but do have distributions that seem to stabilize. When engaging with those sequences of random variables, the notion of convergence in distribution will be quite useful for formalizing what we previously saw. To better understand this, we're going to consider an illustrative example. Here, we're going to consider a sequence of random variables, each of which is Gaussian with variance 1, but with mean that decreases. So for the nth random variable, it's going to have mean 1 over n. So let's visually examine this. So the first random variable is going to be a Gaussian with mean 1 and variance 1. The second, a Gaussian with mean 1 half and variance 1. The third, similarly, all of these, as we can see, are shrinking their mean towards 0, but their width is remaining constant. Right? The fourth, the fifth, the tenth, the hundredth, we can jump up to the thousandth, and we see between the hundredth and the thousandth, there's really almost no change, and these random variables really seem to have a distribution that is looking more and more like a normal with mean zero and variance one. So, as noted, the distribution, or the law of the sequence of random variables, really seems to converge to a standard Gaussian, but we would like to formalize what that means. Toward that end, we're going to give the formal definition of convergence and distribution. If we have a sequence of real-valued random variables, z1, z2, etc., um, we say that it converges in distribution to a random variable z with distribution function f if, for any candidate threshold, lowercase z, the probability that zn, the elements of our sequence, are less than or equal to z, converges to the probability that capital Z, that limiting random variable, is less than or equal to lowercase z. And this doesn't have to happen everywhere. It just has to happen at all thresholds, lowercase z, at which our limiting random variable, capital Z, has a continuous CDF. So this is basically a way of saying, if we look at an event, the probability that zn falls in a set, and we look at the limit as n gets large, that should limit to the probability that capital Z falls in that set. Now it turns out that's equivalent to just looking at these threshold values, little z, and only considering the event that Zn or cap Z is less than or equal to little z. This is also equivalent to saying we have convergence in distribution if the distribution functions of our Zn converge to the distribution function of Z um, everywhere that final distribution function is continued. So let's look at a visual evaluation of this. So going back to our Gaussian example, let's consider a threshold, say, 0 0.5. Um, and for this limiting random variable, cap z, which is distributed normal 0, 1, we ask this question, does the probability that zn is less than or equal to 0 0.5 converge to the probability z, this Gaussian with mean 0 variance 1, is less than or equal to 0 0.5? And again, we would have to show this not just for 0 0.5, but for every possible value we could plug in here. All right, so here we have a dotted blue vertical line that hits 0 0.5 on the x-axis, and shaded in blue, we have a graphical representation of the probability that the first element of our sequence is less than or equal to 0 0.5. As we move through the elements of our sequence, we see that as the density appears to stabilize, so too does this probability, right? Here we have the fifth element, now the tenth element, the hundredth element, finally the thousandth element, and as we saw before, the densities appear to be almost the same, very similar for these last two, very close to a normal zero one. And similarly, this probability, 
looks to stabilize and looks to stabilize in, in value to what it would be for a normal zero limit. So again, visually, it appears that for 0 0.5, this limit holds. And in fact, for any vertical blue line we could have drawn on our previous slides, it seems like that statement visually would have still appeared to hold. So again, it seems like then we have this limiting statement that we need in order to have convergence and distribution, that the probability that our sequence of random variables is less than or equal to some threshold converges to the probability that a standard Gaussian is less than or equal to that threshold. So again, that would tell us that we have convergence and distribution of our sequence of random variables to a standard Gaussian. And if we wanted to formally show that convergence, because we didn't, we just sort of visually engaged with it, we have down here at the bottom of the screen basically how we would do that. Phi here is going to be the CDF of a standard Gaussian, and we note that the CDF of a Gaussian with a mean that's not zero is just the CDF of a Gaussian with a slightly augmented argument inside the parentheses. Here, by noting that phi is actually continuous, we can take the limit from the outside to the inside and we see that as n goes to infinity, phi of z minus 1 over n will converge to phi of z because z minus 1 over n will just converge to z. All right, so we just looked at convergence and distribution. Um, and again, before we had looked at convergence and probability, primarily when we think about convergence and probability in this discussion of asymptotic statistics, we're going to be thinking about convergence and probability to a constant. And when we think about convergence and distribution, we're going to be thinking about convergence and distribution to a non-degenerate distribution. And that means a distribution that is not just a constant, that doesn't just have mass at a single point. Now, you could have convergence and distribution to a constant, and you can have convergence and probability to a non-degenerate random variable. But for our purposes, we are generally not going to engage with the two in that way. This discussion of convergence and distribution will be extremely important when we think about the central limit theorem, which is a very canonical result in asymptotic statistics, and which we then use in many, many different ways to think about sampling distributions, p-values, confidence intervals, etc. as we move forward in a lot of different regimes.